And as promised, uh, friend of the show, uh, officially now, I've convinced you to maybe come on a little more regularly. How, how I mean, did, is that is that accurate or am I projecting? It is accurate. You, it didn't take a lot of convincing. I was uh, I had a, a blast on the first uh, on the first show. So uh, excited to to come back more often. I love it. Yeah, uh, we had such a, a unbelievable response to uh, the interview we did, um, where you were so forthcoming and, and rational, uh, as per usual, about uh, some huge topics. Obviously, Halop. Uh, from when we talked about it, uh, it seems you know, it was only a month ago, but a lot's changed. Uh, she's back. She's playing. Uh, when we first had that conversation, it was more along the lines of, will she ever play again? So I think it was your good vibes that got it done, Kim. Well, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think uh, a lot of hard work from uh, her team and everybody, uh, uh, you know, who, who tried to kind of uh, change the, uh, you yeah, know, prove her, her innocence um, in all this, right? Like she, she, I'm super happy that she was able to play and that we got to see her out on court and just to see how happy she was and how excited she was to be out there and the support that she got, um, I thought was, was great and, and what she deserved. Um, you know, you can tell that she's maybe not as, as game ready as what she was, you know, a couple of years ago, which is normal. Um, but just the excitement to get back. And I'm sure this is very, you know, motivational for her to go on to the clay court season and to, to really prepare uh, well for, uh, for the French Open. Yeah, I, I was actually impressed by the way she played. Obviously, I think fitness, uh, you know, down the, the stretch was maybe lacking a little bit. But as far as ball striking, the shoulder was a little bit tired. Um, but all in all, I, I felt like it was a, a pretty good accounting uh, for her. I mean, she's obviously not going to like miss, miss a ton of balls. She's super competitive. Uh, I want your take on it because I don't know. I don't know what to think of this. And you're normally pretty good at uh, being rational, um, whereas I kind of react uh, emotionally. Uh, Halle, uh, Caroline Wozniacki basically came out and said, and she was very um, cautious with the way she said it, um, but, but basically the, the gist of it was, uh, I don't believe people uh, who have doped uh, should be back and be given uh, wild cards. Now, I disagree specifically with Halle because it's a business and obviously you want her as a storyline, but I understand, uh, I understand what Caroline is saying. I, I, I certainly respect time served. Um, Halep didn't like it. She kind of got a little defensive and said, I'm not a cheater. I didn't dope. Um, and it was, it was, you know, she, you could tell that she was bothered. And I hope that since then she has gone back and watched the actual video of what Caroline has said and not just, uh, listened to a kind of regurgitation, uh, of what was said. Cause I thought Caroline said it as nicely as she could, given the fact that she has an opinion, which even if you don't agree with it is, is a rational uh, opinion. The thing that throws this thing into a, a, a little bit of a, a weird area is Halep was was on record in 2017 when Sharapova came back um, after time served and was given wild card saying absolutely under no circumstances, you know, someone who has tested positive should be allowed uh, wild cards. Uh, it seems like Halep's uh, opinion has changed uh, based on her own circumstance. Uh, what are we to make of this? Um, well, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, first of all, I think every situation, although it comes out as a positive doping result, right? Test. Uh, I think in Halep's situation, it's completely different. Uh, her situation, um, she tested positive unknowingly, right? With a contaminated supplement. Like, I do think that there is, if somebody is taken like we see in cycling or whatever, like does, I don't know the terms or, or, you know, about all the medical products and all that stuff. I don't know that, but like, yeah, when somebody tests positive very strongly for a supp or for something that is taken because of, um, you want to become a better athlete. Yes. 100%. I agree with what Caroline says. Like, you know, we shouldn't, they need to start from the bottom. Like they have to work their way up. Um, being clean, get tested often, and um, and work your way way back back to the top. But I think in Simona's case, and again, like we come back to you know what we talked about previously, like her team made such a big mistake. I, I, I'm and by the way, on that point, I feel, I have a lot of sympathy for her because of misplaced trust. We should know, we should test, we shouldn't blindly trust. She did. I feel like she was kind of manipulated a little bit. So I completely agree with you on that point. Yeah, so that's where I do think, like, and her reaction 
is like, listen, I didn't cheat. And her saying something about Maria in the past, to me, only shows her vision of how she looks at doping and that she's not a cheater, like when it comes to to, to, to taking doping and, and to use that to become a better athlete. I do believe that. Yeah, I, the, the, the word intent is weird because you can say, I didn't dope, I'm not a doper, and I think it should be, I didn't intentionally dope. <laughs> because if you test positive, you have taken a performance enhancing drug. So you can't say like, I didn't purposely cheat, I didn't knowingly cheat, I didn't, but you can't say like, I'm, yeah, not, accidentally, I'm not this. Right? Like, accidentally. So, and it's a weird thing too, because the Sharapova, I feel like, you know, she, it, it, I've asked a couple of people just to try to get smarter and it feels like people judge uh, the Maria situation different because of the reputation of of meldonium, right? And so it's like, well, that was a performance enhancer. It just wasn't illegal. Well, I'm like, okay, isn't that every supplement? Like every supplement you take is taken for the benefit of what? To make your body feel better, to make you feel better, to enhance performance. So her saying, I didn't know when it went from illegal, uh, sorry, from legal to illegal, uh, it, it's just a, it's just a weird, I, I feel right. like it, you know, it's, it's, it's like a weird thing where it's like, well, that, you know, it was a, it was a performance enhancing supplement. I'm like, well, that's every right. supplement though. Right. But like, I mean, my feel on it all is, you know, all like products, they come onto the market, right? There's somebody who creates something to try and make some, some athlete better. I think Russia, like there was a huge documentary years ago that I watched in Belgium about, um, you know, these Russian labs where they create products to, to help like players, their athletes, whether it doesn't matter, whether it's, you know, any sport, not just tennis players, any, any athlete to, to improve and to try and get away, you know, to try and kind of sneak a new product in and get benefits from it. Right. Like that's, you know, the, yeah, that's how it, it works, I guess, in a sense. And, and so whatever meldonium or I think, there you take a product um and you're right like maria didn't take that you know because it was like it wasn't a banned substance like like so so it's it's there's no blame like there's you know yeah, for that. I, like, I just I, I guess for my thing is like i didn't have a problem with what caroline said even if there is nuance in every case i don't like i mean obviously halop comes back i think you need to come back with a general under, general understanding that you can't assume every single person knows every exact thing that happened in your trial. I think that's presumptuous, especially on the heels of your previous statements, not giving the grace to someone who you also might not have known all of the elements of their case. I just kind of, I'm someone who like craves consistency and it seems like there's a uh, an inconsistency in opinion based on personal circumstance, right? Uh, and I, I don't want, you know, I, I hope Halep went back and watched the Wozniacki thing just because I don't feel like she was taking shots even in the slightest. Like, I don't, and, I don't it no, was just her opinion. Like, maybe a journalist asked, asked Simona that question in the press. Totally. You know how it goes, right? Totally. Like, oh, Caroline said this. And, and you know, like, you, they create kind of a, a story. Um, so, but again, like, what I always try to think about, I don't know if you hear the snoring. Um, it's not my husband it's, laying yeah, on I was the about couch to say, next are you, to me. Are you doing this podcast while someone, there <laughs> it is. A little bulldog right there. Fellow English bulldog <laughs> owner. Dreamland. I, I was um, going to ask about it. I don't know if you're like passing wind or something. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I just try to like think about the situation and I try to, believe that I've always been very cautious. And when, you know, my team has, has done things, you know, to, yeah, where I was sick or like, did you check it? Like, I, yeah, we checked it with the WTA. Like if that gets told to you, like I wasn't going to send the, those emails out to the WTA or, you know, like, so you have to trust your team. And if, if you do that and I don't know where that communication went wrong within the team, like I do feel differently about that. Like I do yeah. feel differently I, I, about that. I think it comes down to Halop taking something new from something from someone who gave it to her. You take those things to enhance performance and it's pretty straight. It's either legal 
or it's not. And there's a clear line in the sand where, in Maria's case, it's generally known that you know she had taken that for a long time, and it was viewed negatively. I, I think in, in the world of sports, um, but it was known. Like everyone knew what it was. Everyone felt like the ban on meldonium specifically was coming. I think they're both guilty of crossing T's, dotting I's, and you got to know what's legal, when it's legal, who's giving it to you, what are the trusted sources. Uh, I am glad that I am not uh, responsible for choosing what happens and what the guidelines are uh, for the Hall of Fame with these two, because obviously, because obviously they're they're first ballot Hall of Famers, uh, in my opinion. Um, I think the easiest thing for the Hall of Fame to do, and this is me projecting uh, to El Presidente uh, of the Hall of Fame right now, but it, it feels like an opportunity to celebrate how tough the drug testing protocols are in tennis. Like, you, you know, you hear positive for you know something that has 17 vowels. Uh, three X's in it and, you know, four other, you know, letters that you can, can barely pronounce together. And that's like the technical term for aspirin. Sounds like the Belgian language. No, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it, I think it's an opportunity to say, listen, we're going to have some, the, the reason why we've had some of these positives, it is so strict, right? You can test positive for Sudafed. You can test positive. You used to be able to test positive for athlete's foot powder, like these are insane things to test positive for, but that you don't have to worry about uh, in other sports. We should celebrate the fact that like intent, no one's taking anabolic steroids and testing positive for that. Like that's just not happening. Uh, I don't think it's our job, your job uh, at the Hall of Fame uh, with your team there to uh, diagnose intent. That's been done in the courts simply if the courts and the systems have said this was not intentional and it's an imperfect system, so we can go down that rabbit hole if you want, it's not uh, the job of the Hall of Fame to overrule a court to then judge on intent and celebrate the fact that we get tested more than any athletes on earth. We get tested in our home. We get tested with blood. They can randomly knock on your door at five in the morning and you have to pee in a cup. Like, it is a simultaneously a chance to punt responsibility because I don't think it's the job of the Hall of Fame to try to qualify intent. I think there's time served, and I think there should be a level that's not Sudafed or something that's over the counter. Uh, there does need to be some differentiated, but the problem is we consume in headlines, and that's a tough headline to write. But uh, wh where do you stand on that? Is I mean, am, I, am I missing something? Have I not thought about no, something? No, you said it all. <laughs> you said it all. Can you join me when I uh, in my meetings at the Hall of Fame? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna jump on that grenade. You made that okay, mistake, not right. me. <laughs> Uh, and we got. Uh, I, no, I, kinda, I agree. Go like ahead. it's it's uh, you know, and and the voters they may have a personal opinion about it, but I don't think, um, yeah, it needs to have an effect um, once the the suspension is everything is passed and and life goes on and. Um, yeah, and then, I, I I just I, I just think the easiest thing ever is to celebrate how stringent and that we have the toughest drug testing protocols yeah. in any sport on earth, maybe outside of just general Olympic protocols where the only way you're getting away with something, if it's like a Balco situation where there's a de designer steroid, someone has to go and tell on them and tell them what to look for. And then all of a sudden you pick off 50 baseball players uh, because you know, they, they weren't able to test for what the, what was being taken. This feels like a different uh, I remember scenario. like, like back in the day, especially like when you had like a good result, I would have like three days in a row of random, like it was like, it was the, the, Fe the Belgian Federation, it was ITF. Yep. Yep. And then you had like whatever else there was like, I, it was crazy. Like, and, and I never knew that there were so many different organizations that can come in and have the rights to come and test you. Like it's, uh, but it was, it was very obvious that, you know, especially when you had a good result. Um, and, um, yeah, they like to, come knock on your door. And, uh, I mean, I remember one time, like I just went to pee literally like three minutes before. And all of a sudden I hear like, ding dong, like in Belgium, yep. my front door, it was like five to six. And they and sit I, and watch you until you have to go again. Yeah. And they yep. sit there in your kitchen and I was just trying <laughs> to be polite. Like you can't do anything and you can't go anywhere. Like I can't go and take a nap until I have to pee again. Like, no, I have to stay there and stay inside. And I was like, would you like some coffee? And they're like, no, we're not allowed to take anything from, you know, the, I'm like, okay. 
So you just literally you want, just you, sit there. Do you, and, uh, do you, do you, very do you, awkward. Do you want some coffee with supplements crushed into it? <laughs> no? I heard it. We'll go on after this because this was literally a side tangent that I thought would take two minutes, but then it became uh, interesting, I think. Um, we weren't going to go this deep on this subject, but here we are. Uh, one of the stories that... No, but Andy, but have you yeah. never been in a situation where like a trainer or somebody says like, I don't know, like, it's a good lesson for the younger generation, yes. I feel like, right? Like to, to really take this as an example for coaches, for like everybody yeah. involved, like trainers, physios, whoever. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a also, great lesson. Like, yeah, it, it's and okay. So now I'm going another one. I get asked often uh, about, you know, certain players and is there a, what's, is there a problem with, with, with drug testing or s steroid use or something in tennis? And I say, well, like just very pragmatically, right? The cost of to pass the testing that Lance Armstrong was was passing was millions of dollars a year. Like that was a whole operation of very clinical, very organized uh, people on salary, people hiding stuff, moving from here to there. It literally cost millions. Frankly speaking, ninety nine percent of tennis players can't afford the program that it would take to consistently <laughs> dodge the drug testing because it is so effective. The only thing we can't solve for is what we don't know, like a Balco uh, situation. So I hate that the headlines make it seem like there's an issue in tennis when it's actually, when someone tests positive, it's because of the strength of, of uh, the doping. It's like during an Olympic year, God forbid, you get tested. You land in France, you get tested by their federation, you get tested by all your Olympic committees, you get tested by the eight, uh, ITF, you get tested by the ATP. The slams have their own testing. I mean, when and it's weighted based on rankings. So Kim, not understanding that she got tested a lot after a good result was because she was always good. Uh, and it was weighted, that the drug testing was weighted by ranking. <laughs> that was like a subtle flex there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, listen, it, it's, it's not an issue in tennis. Uh, but it should be a lesson learned for the young players, like Kim said. Like, I, I would be so, I was ridiculous about any, I wouldn't take cough medicine, even if it was, even yeah, if it was like. Yeah, but we recently had a player in the yeah. WTA tour who tested positive, and they were able to prove that the meat that they ate in South America yep. had like hormone, like certain types of hormones in it. And, you know, it was such a minimum, yeah, result, yep. but it, crazy. Like, it's, it's, um, yeah. So don't and especially don't with social media now, everything too, because everything yeah, yeah, is yeah. you know. It's it's hard to the 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 <laughs> you can't put the toothpaste back in on social media. Like once it's said once, that's just accepted by you know fifty percent of everyone. Uh, you know it, it, we don't we don't really we've proven in many different areas that we don't really work well with nuance. Um, but anyways, uh, take this out. I hope I hope Simona and Caroline just get together and have a. 90 second conversation as I imagine they will and I hope that's just over um, but anyways it was good to see uh, Halleck back